asylum. And pranams at the lotus feet of Bhagawan, dear brothers and sisters. I want to share with you what had happened on 29th of October 2003. It was uh, the evening around uh, 4 o'clock and all the vice chancellors who attended the meeting who came here to evaluate and assess the standards of such Sai University wanted to share their experiences in the presence of Bhagwan with everybody there in the open auditorium. Well, among the many the vice chancellors, about three to four have been filled up to express their views. And uh, I want to share with you those views expressed by the Vice Chancellors which has already been recorded. And this is just um, an, an, the word, a follow-up, I can say that, or what students felt about it. Bhagavan asked some of the students also to share their experiences, because many of the Vice Chancellors assembled there. Well, I may draw your attention that Swami will just pick up the boys like that. He won't give them any time to make lot of preparation or to do sufficient homework. They have got to be ready, ever ready. He may pick up anybody in any time. Like that on 29th of October 2003. Few students have been picked up to speak and share their views with the audience. And each one spoke in one, lang one Indian language. With the result we had speeches in English, Sanskrit, Hindi and Telugu. But I will give you a summary of their talks in English so that you can follow and appreciate. The first speaker name is Sri Seshank Shah S.A. S A N K Sishank Shah S H A H. He is a student of second year MBA class who spoke in English. The second speaker is Vai Ranga Nadha Razu R A N G A N A D H A R A J U. He is a second year student of MA class who spoke in Telugu. The third speaker is V. Jagannathan, J A G A N N A, D H A N, Jagannathan, student of M Tech, Computer Science. He spoke in Sanskrit. The fourth speaker is Jagadish Chandra, C H A N D R A, MSc student. He spoke in Hindi. And all appreciated their talks and Swami patted them on their back and showered His blessings generously on all the four which they, reserve, they deserve. So we shall proceed one after one and I will try to give you the substance of that talk. The first speaker, Sri Sheshank Shah, second year MBA, who spoke in English. He shared his views with the people like this. Bhagavan Baba declared in the year 1951 itself that there, will, that there would be Sri Satya University here in Puttaparthi very, very long ago. Bhagavan happened to visit one school there in Bukkapatnam, very close village, three miles away from here, where he studied. And Bhagwan was invited to go there for their school anniversary. And Swami attended their school anniversary function, being the old student of that school also. And uh, the headmaster, while welcoming, said, Bhagwan, we want a junior college here in this place. 
let this high school have some intermediate sections also so that this school can be upgraded into a junior college then swami while giving his discourse mentioned taking everybody in surprise why junior college there will be university here in puttaparthi why junior college this he said in the year 1951 december this got materialized after 30 years because sachcha university was founded in year 1981 november 22nd and then sheshang said that the sachcha university was founded to inculcate human values to students apart from academic courses there are number of universities all over the country this is not merely an extra addition universities already in existence this university is there with a difference which means the background the purpose of it is the dissemination of human values so as to mold ideal citizens of this country that's what he said Sheshank also mentioned the medium of instruction in Sri Sachcha University is discipline. The first, second, and third languages studied in this university, offered in this university, are love, service, and sadhana or spiritual practice. And Sheshank wanted all of us to go back to. around 50 years at least in the year, year of those years early 50s when puttaparthi had no transport facilities no proper roads also and today we have got bus facilities where airport and also railway line connected to this place what a tremendous change it is and this sachcha university is a connecting link proving to the whole world the strong bond of love existing between students and bhagwan sri sachcha sai baba sachcha sai university is an expression of bhagwan's feeling of giving and forgiving Bhagwan mentioned repeatedly the students are his property, and Bhagwan's love for students is beyond all our imagination. No definition can clearly give us the depth of his love for students. His love is beyond all known measures of human comprehension. and swami has got that himalayan quality of forgiveness he gives and forgives sheshank mentioned two instances in this connection to substantiate his statement that baba forgives this incident had happened in the year 1970 and uh, you know there in bangalore there is a college and also a hostel attached to the college and uh, as the hostel happened to be too small swami was uh, thinking to have a bigger hostel to accommodate students more and more in the years to come so all plans were made ready to lay the foundation stone for the construction of a new hostel building there in bangalore plans were ready all orders were placed and the date also was fixed to lay the foundation stone and then hello boys are not happy because the new hostel 
which was proposed to have been conducted at that time, constructed at that time, was to be located at a long distance, which will make the boys to stay away from Swami, and they are not prepared psychologically to be away from him physically. At that moment, a very young boy, very young boy, gave a small letter to Swami, and Swami was deeply touched and literally moved by reading that small letter written by one of the boys. You know, Bhagwan responds to our prayers. The prayer would make anything possible on earth, which seems to be impossible to him, to all of us, the poor mortals. There is nothing that cannot be done by prayer. Because of this simple, genuine, humble prayer of this young boy, Swami decided to respond positively. You know what Baba said, Swami, are you justified in taking, in taking us away from you, Bhagavan? Do you think that we can make this, we can bear this separation? If at all you have decided to construct a new hostel, especially for us now, I pray, Bhagavan, better you have your residence also newly built by the side of our new hostel to come up. So he wants Swami also to have a new building for him. Because as Swami wants them to have a new hostel, which naturally will take them away from him physically, he doesn't want to be away from Bhagavan. So Swami, you too have a new house by the side of our proposed new hostel building that has really touched Swami. And he called the chief engineer in charge of the construction of the hostel building and said, change the plans, change, shift the plot from there to this place so that boys can stay very close to me because they don't want to be away from me, they are crying. That's what Baba said. And today, the hostel building, what you find there in Whitefield, Bangalore, is a replica, is a monument of love, of Swami, for students. That's what you will know that. And Seshank narrated another instance also, which speaks of Bhagwan's love for students. One day what happened was, a boy sat in the car of Bhagawan, white Impala car, and he did not notice that the car is in the gear. The moment he sat there, the car started, Swami's car, and it had hit against the wall, very close to that car shed. The boy was frightened. He was in jitters. He was literally shaken and he ran away from there. He didn't come for darshan for two days and warden inquired about his whereabouts. Somehow the boy came for darshan after absence for two days and came there shivering. Swami saw that boy and said, Boy, do you think I am angry with you? No, no, I am not angry with you. You are more important than my car. When the car had hit the wall, it might have been smashed. I am not worried about it. I am glad that nothing had happened to you because you are more important than my car. That's what Bhagavan said. Then the boy fell at the lotus feet and washed both of his feet with the tears of regrets and repentances. Swami's love is much more than thousand mothers' love. That's what Sashank mentioned. And in fact, 
the university boys learn the human values from bhagwan himself as a role model bhagwan teaches and practices then shashank mentioned another incident which had happened in the year 1972 at the time we used to have uh, summer clothes summer classes in indian culture and spirituality open to students from all over the country every state can participate every district can participate every county can have participate around 1000 students from all over the country used to attend the seminars in those days and uh, one day the topic dealt by a professor that morning happened to be on non violence ahimsa the talk was over and boys uh, entered into the dining hall and two boys started talking very intimately and among, among whom one boy was playing with the lions there with his nails he was cutting the leaves of the grasses lions over there just play and the first boy said why do you do that why do you injure those leaves with your nails have you not heard the talk on ahimsa non violence just now given by the professor why do you do that now why are you violent to that plan now why and the other boy said after all just a grass why are you so agitated why are you so disturbed there is nothing wrong about it later next morning swami called one of the two boys look here boy what is it that you are talking yesterday before the boy gave the answer swami gave all the details to them and said you said after all the grass nothing wrong with it you are wrong know that the grass also has life in it when you just cut with your nails it also feels the damage you are hurting it will also feel the pain that's what he said and then with a happy smile bhagwan touched a rose bud there rose bud a tender touch <coughs> when swami touched that bud started blossoming that bud started opening and swami said see here that is the power of love the power of <coughs> love made this bud open up blossom that's what you find notice it and further swami said he wanted this boy to touch another flower bud close by when this boy touched another bud that bud started opening up then swami said that is the effect of love the love can transform anything it will make the flower blossom that's what swami said and then swami said anything will respond provided you have love the swar swami said and swami gave definition of this word non violence in single sentence not hurting anybody by thought word and deed is non violence that's what swami said and shashank continuing his talk said that the university offers training in regular secular knowledge and apart from that they are also taught the principles of different religions so that they will know that all religions are one and god is one so the synthesis of religions is also taught to students here in this university that's what baba said 
and this university offers education not merely in a classroom students learn at three places one in the hostel two college campus three mandir premises in all these three places they learn human values yes and this university has got the highest standards of this country as judged by the university grants commission yes and the boy said the real property is spirituality not the worldly knowledge or the secular information but at the same time we should learn how to bring about a balance between the worldly knowledge and the spiritual knowledge no doubt they are separate but at the same time we should be able to make strike out a balance between the two and lead a comfortable life as bhagwan said there are two things important the rights and the duties the rights and duties are comparable to the two wings of a bird the swat that boy said the education offered here in sri satcha university is for living and not for life it passes on all the important values relating to righteous conduct ethics morality physical mundane universal and spiritual contents so that they would be able to respond whenever it is necessary this is what is called integrated education when students are taught how to behave with other friends how to be respectful to elders well that makes them a total integrated personality the education should not make anybody broken fractured or amputated the education should make everybody a total integrated personality and really this university is lucky enough to have bhagwan sri sat sai baba as vice chancellor i'm sorry as the chancellor bhagwan is the chancellor is not a, a, a blessing a, a fortune that the university is in safe hands of the creator himself and what is it that we can give him in return how can we express our gratitude to bhagwan for what all he did and shashank concluded his talk by just telling it's enough if we prove to be worthy instruments in the hands of bhagwan to fulfill his divine mission all over the world so our prayer should be to be the fit instruments in his hands saying these words he brought his talk to a close now i pass on to the summary of the next speaker by name y ranganath raju of ma class those guys student who speak who spoke in telugu he said the, made the following statements there is only one religion and that is the religion of law there is only one caste the caste of humanity this presentarium particularly the hostel speaks as a testimony of what swami said well they may be from tamil nadu karnataka andhra orissa gujarat punjab kashmir they may be anybody but when once they land here they behave as sisters and brothers which is an extraordinary thing outside we find policies and administration goes on 
by the laws of the land. But if there is no law at all, it is Bhagavan who is guiding this entire university. That makes everybody think of paradise. If there were so many paradise, it cannot be any place other than Prashantinaya. And this Raju said, Swami's love is beyond class, cadre, sex. Because Swami's love has no conditions. People from all over the world speaking different languages are drawn over there. So he has no what you call bias or anything. He belongs to everybody, everybody. There is nothing like class structure there. The boy may be the son of a millionaire, another boy may be a son of a papa. Millionaire and papa are one and the same in front of Swami. Simple example. I think most of you must be watching crossword puzzle in the newspapers. Do you? Crossword puzzle. Do you know that? Or do you have any word there? In our language. Okay. Crossword puzzle. So a boy is very much interested in crossword puzzles. And one day, he was just filling up those puzzles. And he was running short of four words. And uh, it, it didn't strike to his mind. Of course, they gave him some clue also. It becomes with I mean, a, a clue saying that it represents a country, the name of which begins with the letter Q. Still the boy could not say what it is, in spite of scratching the head many times. Swami, looking at the devotee, said, It is. They are from Iraq. Q, I-R-A-Q, the last letter. They are from Iraq. And then, it is uh, an oil country, as all of you know. So with this I R A Q Iraq, the whole puzzle is solved for the boy. Swami's answers are mysterious. Swami's way of handling people is unique. How he tickles every person, well that's really worth and in sight for gods to do that. And a small puzzle is done. And Swami's actions also seem to be very peculiar. It cannot be brought down to the level of the human mind. Raju gave another example. In every student after coming here, and unknowingly, a silent transformation takes place in him. His, his whole personality will be totally different from the past. And this is also uh, a revelation. And the speaker mentioned another instance. The boys were getting ready for the sports and cultural meet that year. The boy mentioned this incident which speaks of the psychology of students here. Mm -hmm. Yes. And uh, all of you know the winners in this sports uh, meet will have the privilege of receiving gold medals from the divine hands. From Bhagwan in front of 50,000 devotees, not an ordinary thing. So there was very keen competition among the boys because opportunity to receive a cup from Bhagwan directly. And two boys are participating in the running race. Of course, it's final round. Many participated and uh, second, third and everything still third. Finally, two. One has to be the winner, naturally. They were running. And all people who were watching, one boy fell down. <coughs> fell down. 
naturally the other boy has to declared as a winner winner he will receive the cup from bhagwan and uh, at the end of the running race the other uh, boys came and started consoling that boy who fell down don't worry don't worry at all sometimes in life uh, it happens and then one boy asked him how is it that you fell down all of a sudden you are a very fast runner you stood fast all these years how is it that you fell down all of a sudden why you know what that boy said the other boy who won made a promise to his father that he will be the college champion this year he promised him and told his father that he will certainly receive cup from bhagwan so i don't want to disappoint him i wanted him to win the game so i purposefully fell will it happen anywhere in the world no no you can say that so this is the spirit of sacrifice which is an exception it is not mere competition it is not mere winning or losing it is something much more the values of life and the speaker raju ma student said this i come from an area full of terrorists area of violence people kill each other but seeing me nobody would believe that i come from those parts of terrorists from those parts of rowdies who kill each other today i am in front of you like this because bhagwan made me a cultured decent man of human values and further he said can you deny this i openly declare this is the effect of bhagwan's love on my life and then one student he narrated one incident it seems a student has got a a practice of cutting his nails every thursday every thursday it has become his uh, habit almost one thursday it so happened that he had to rush to the college he couldn't cut his nails on the same day baba happened to visit the institute he called this boy he said how are you with the wave of his hand he materialized a nail cutter and <laughs> come on you can cut your nails with this was what he said bhagwan's leelas are miracles cannot be estimated cannot be judged cannot be explained so saying that boy quoted a poem composed by bhagwan himself long long ago a beautiful poem composed by divine master baba i'll give you the translation just as an apology that's all i don't think that i would be doing a ju- full justice to the original composition but i'll give you just meaning of it whatever i may have plenty prosperity or poverty whatever i may have i am not bothered if you are pleased with me that is enough bhagwan whatever i may lose whatever i may gain if you are favorable to me that is enough bhagwan and i have number of desire fulfilled or unfulfilled but if thy grace is on me that is enough swami i may be in positions high position 
or out of position, whatever may be, if you love me, that is enough, Swami. I have so many things that you have given me, and those things that I am likely to get in future, okay, I will get it. But, Lord, I want one promise from you. I only desire one thing, that I should lead that kind of life as to make you say that I am your devotee, that you are pleased with me, that is enough for this life. Then he recited this poem. There was thunderous applause in the whole of the auditorium that day. And then he quoted another poem composed by Bhagavan himself. Just, uh, I may tell you my friends, you too may be watching me quoting Swami's poems in the course of my talk whenever I am given the chance to speak in the Divine Presence. I quote Swami freely because not that I want to expose my scholarship, no. Those poems are in Telugu and that's my mother tongue, easy to pick up. So I can quote from the original and those people among the audience who know Telugu will be able to appreciate very much. But I don't want to disappoint others. I'll make translation in English then and there immediately. Knowing fully well that full justice is not done well. I know that. But yet I must do my job. This is the substance of the second poem quoted by that boy written by Bhagavan himself fifty years ago. O oh God, thou art, thou art to the tree, and I am a creeper round you. O oh Lord, you are the flower, I am the honey bee, making buzzy sound around you. O oh Bhagavan, you are that vast sky and the small star shining and glittering along the way. Bhagavan, you are the ocean and I am only a river trying to merge in you. O oh Swami, you are the mountain and the waterfall. This is the substance of the poem which is also loudly cheered. And Swami wanted him to repeat this poem once again that day. God amuses his own composition. And then the next speaker is Mr. V. Jagannathan, M. Tech class, student of computer sciences. Here this boy quoted a verse from Adi Shankara. You must have heard of Adi Shankara, the greatest intellectual that the world has produced. People say he is a very incarnation of Shankara, Lord Shiva himself. We will think of Shankara later. Really, I feel like talking to a small group on Ramana Maharishi and Shankara someday. Because these two topics are not given to everybody. These two topics cannot be understood by everybody unless one has got a depth, unless one has got 100% concentration, unless one has sufficient background in spirituality, they cannot understand these two, Shankara and Raman Maharshi. I only pray Baba, Ramana Maharshi. Yes. I pray that someday I should get this opportunity to speak on the compositions and the lives of these two great people. Then this boy, Jagannathan, quoted from Adi Shankara's composition. There is one um, composition of Adi Shankara called Saundarya Lahari. Saundarya Lahari, meaning 
the beauty flows the incessant flow of beauty that is the translation if i can give you that way the composition in praise of goddess the divine mother what do we do during our bath in the day time people go to the river as they take bath there collect some water there from the river offer it to god water is there which is the creation of god not yours and you offer the same water to god am i clear oh god what else can i give you other than your own creation because everything belongs to you i have nothing i can only offer your own gifts back to you swami i don't have enough it is this idea they collect water there and offer it to god similarly swami what all we have learned from you will be offered back to you out of our devotion we don't have anything else to give you god we know that nothing can happen in this world unless you will unless you determine nothing can happen in this world oh god we know and the boy mentioned one episode from mahabharata the great epic there in that epic there is one character by name arjuna a r j u n a a great warrior a man of strength expert in archery and this arjuna went on pilgrimage he visited several places and then at one place he saw hanuman hanuman is a character from ramayana there arjuna saw hanuman there he didn't uh, no hanuman he has no knowledge of hanuman because hanuman belongs to treta yuga earlier period rama's times whereas arjuna belongs to krishna's times so he has no chance to know him at all well he took him as an ordinary monkey and then hanuman introduced himself who he is in a very very fantastic way simple example arjuna looked at that bridge there near rameshwaram cape comoran and uh, told hanuman there look you are sri rama built that bridge with the help of monkeys no <laughs> had i been there i would have done it shooting arrows i would have constructed the build bridge with arrows single handed without help of the monkeys and rama got it done with the help of the monkeys who oh, was great about rama that's what arjuna said hanuman is deeply hurt oh i see are you so, oh, are you so great as that and then he said come and do it now so arjuna shot arrows a bridge is ready now then hanuman said let me test it how strong it is and hanuman started walking on the bridge the bridge started shaking like the modern bridges which are made up of more of sand and less of cement ready to collapse any moment and then arjuna started trembling he prayed to krishna silently and then immediately arjuna said oh hanuman you walk again this time when hanuman walked again this time the bridge was strong and later krishna appeared in front of arjuna arjuna 
know this. When Hanuman was walking on the bridge, it is ready to collapse. When you prayed to me, I kept my back in support of the bridge, so it did not fall. It did not collapse because I gave my back. I was supporting that bridge. Now you find blood, stripes of blood on my back. This is the episode narrated by that boy as stated by Bhagwan to them few years ago. And that boy said, Arjuna's prestige and dignity were kept up by God. Those of us who believe in God can live in respect and in grace. We don't have to bend our head in shame before anybody because God is there. Because the prestige of the devotee is the prestige of the Lord. He will never allow anybody to fail. That's what that boy said. And then the boy made a mention of another statement made by Bhagawan. It seems Swami told boys, which is, will be of interest to all of us, Boys, you may go anywhere. You may do any spiritual practice. But remember, anywhere, any spiritual practice will be beneficial, will find its fulfillment, will make you earn the grace. Because of me only understand this. Any path you may follow, I am there to bless you. You may go anywhere, I am there to bless you. Understand this. Such as Sai Baba is the ultimate reality. He will continue to shower his blessings to everybody, everywhere, whichever path you may follow. This Bhagwan said it and everybody Oh, wow, I felt extremely happy on hearing this statement made by the boy. And the boy said, Swami wants us to cultivate few important steps in our life. We have to begin with self-confidence. Out of this confidence we have self-satisfaction. And this self-satisfaction will make us ready for self-sacrifice which will end up in self-realization. These are absolutely necessary. Service is the best path of life. With this sentence, he concluded his talk. Then we had last speaker, Jagdish Chandra, MSc first year physics, who spoke in Hindi. The earlier speaker, Jagannathan, spoke in Sanskrit. This speaker is in Hindi. You may be wondering, Anil Kumar, do you know all these languages? Hindi, Sanskrit and all that. I do not know. I requested them to give them, to give me English version of their talks. <laughs> yes, and they gave me and I made a note of it. I have no false claims of knowledge of all the languages, no. It is enough if I am thorough with these two languages, I know. The, my mother tongue Telugu and English which I have learnt as medium of instruction. Now, Jagdish Chandra, what did he say in Hindi? He narrated an episode from our epics. The demons and angels participate in a tug of war. They started churning the ocean of milk. They started churning the ocean of milk. Angels on one side, demons on the other side. When the ocean of milk was churned by these two rival groups, out of which came up the divine nectar. And today, 
there is a tug of war between good and evil forces in this ocean of life out of which is born out of which has emanated the nectarine beautiful majestic form avatar of our times bhagwan sri sachin sai baba bhagwan sri sachin sai baba has taken life has taken birth out of this churning process between evil and good that's what he said and swami is nectarine and then he started mentioning few important points today we find people concentrating more on money everyone thinks of money money makes many things but not everything money makes many things but not everything it is unfortunate that money has taken priority in individual lives today in the modern times and people do not have the knowledge of the self of as mentioned by adi shankara or ramana maharshi they have knowledge of the nature but they do not have knowledge of their true nature they have got the knowledge of the outer world but they have no knowledge of their inner self that's what is happening and bhagwan says this knowledge of the self is so close to you is so near to you and we don't see the light we grow up in the darkness of ignorance we are drowned in the darkness of illusion we don't watch the light within us the light of the self that's what he mentioned which is so close to us and this boy mentioned such a sai university is the dream of the student community realized in reality we have students drawn from all over the country from all states representing different cultures of this land different languages of this land right from kindergarten to the level of doctorate degree education is totally free totally free and baba told students one point which goes on ringing in their ears day and night what did he tell them boys always be sure i am always with you with you in you and around you be sure that i am always with you in you and around you yes that gives us enough enthusiasm enough of courage enough of dynamism in life that's what baba said to quote swami that boy said believe that i am always around you to motivate you and to inspire you to awaken the me within you and when i see you responding i put all the knowledge of the world in front of you and myself teach you in a language that is for me and you there is a separate language between you and swami which is totally personal personal i myself will teach you what i really want to teach you in the language known to me and you i shall also see that you will learn all things of this world easily without any difficulty and then the boy mentioned one incident it seems one student from the higher secondary school unfortunately lost his eyesight in an accident very unfortunate some of those are rolling on 
on and on, and examinations are fast approaching. How do you expect this boy to appear for the examination and fail? It's not that easy. How do you expect him to do that? It is becoming increasingly difficult because he could not read and prepare. But he has got firm faith in him. The Swami will come to his rescue. The Swami will save him. He has got the deep feeling in him. And what had happened? God never fails. One day he came slowly and gently towards him, waved vibhuti and smeared on his eyes. Immediately boy got his vision normal. He could see everything. He could read and he could prepare. That's how faith is instilled in our hearts. Not by reading, not by listening, but our personal experience. That's what that boy said. And you know, thousands and thousands of people who are treated there in the super speciality hospital, millions of people whose thirst is quenched by the drinking water supply, speak of God's love for his children. And he mentions another incident, this boy, in his talk, mentioned another incident. It seems a student got admitted to the, host to the hostel for the first time, young boy. He was very homesick. He started crying. However, he kept Swami's picture very close to him. And he kept it on his chest, wept and wept, and slept. There in the sleep, Bhagwan appeared in the dream, took this boy, catching hold of his hand, took him round the hostel. He had shown him every room, and he had shown him the kitchen, every place. He had shown him the water taps, dining hall, kitchen, what not. And he made him sit in the car also, travel along with him. All this happened in the dream. And there in the dream asked him, Is my car good? Is it beautiful? It's a new car. How do you like it? That question he asked him there in the dream. Naturally, dream will not last long. The dream vanishes. The dream comes to an end at some time or other. Yes, next morning the boy got up. He saw other students running towards the road. He asked them classmates, where, where are you going? Why do you run? They said, Swami is likely to come this way, so we are going. So to, he too ran there and stood along with them. And this boy got a chance to come close to the window of the car. And he saw the same car in the dream. And he saw the same smile of Baba as he saw him there in his dream. Now also I put the same question. Boy, do you like my car? How do you like this car? That's what this is. And the boy said, this is an open question to all of you. Do you come across God, any God, who will just melt by just one tear? By just one tear, he melts and responds, Do you find God of that type? Now, the boy, is well-read boy, I understand, he quoted from a book, a good book on Krishna, Sri Krishna Leelamritam, a very good book, Sri Krishna Leelamritam. He quoted verse from that which aptly fits into the context. The God worshipped by all angels, the God adored by all sages and saints, and the God who attracted all cowherd boys and cowherd girls of Vrindavan. And that God 
is in our midst in the form of Bhagavan Sri Satsai Baba. Where is paradise? Where is heaven? That is here now. With these sentences he has concluded his talk. Mm-hmm.